I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets which you can download in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day. So if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel and share out the videos. And now we're going to carry on with a paper S of the 2019 Grade 5 Practice Paper Booklet. If you turn with me to page 27, and we'll have a look at question 4. Ooh, over the page there, there we go. So now we're going to have a look at question 4. So we're going to be referring back to this little extract by Elgar and answering some questions. So first of all the questions are referring to the uh, performance directions, the musical terms and so on that are in this piece and these are presented to you as multiple choice. Now do remember that this can be anything from grades 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. The terms build up accumulatively which means there's quite a lot. At the end of each of the PDF documents you'll find a little test so you can test yourself whilst you're revising and in the back of some of the earlier grades you'll find some uh, revision tips as well. So then I hope you've had a go of these, just have a crack at them, it's better to um, get them wrong and you'll learn more thoroughly that way, always use a pencil and then you can just erase any mistakes. So this is a, a violin um, bowing symbol and it means down bow. So the bow is going in a downward direction for this. Written Newto, I think that goes right back to grade one. It means held back, sort of grouped with um, ritardando uh, and so on. Um, but it's more of sort of pulling on the reins rather than a gradual sort of um, slowing down. So it's all held back there. So now then we have this word dolce and we need to choose a word that is similar to that meaning. So dolce itself means sweetly. And before we go ahead and answer this question, let's give all of these uh, definitions. Let's make best use of this as a revision aid. So einfach, you must uh, excuse my pronunciation here. I do not speak German at all to my shame. So this, it, this means sad. And sus means sweet. So there we have our answer. And lebhaft is lively, not appropriate in this instance. So sweet. And so you would underline sweet. There we go, sus. Now the next question. We're asked to rewrite the first right hand piano chord of bar eight. It's marked with an arrow and we need to make sure it's at the same pitch so no jumping octaves but we're using the tenor clef and so we're going to have to change the clef in the key signature here so if I put my bar lines double bar lines and then the tenor clef is centered around this second line down so we build our clef around that and then our key signature of one sharp must come lower because uh, the clef is so high C, B, A, G, F sharp. There we go. So let's see what this chord is in bar 8. So here is middle C. That's going to be our reference point. And we're one note below that. So let's do that for starters. So one note below middle C is there. Because that's our middle C that we built the clef around. And then here we are one, two, three, four, five, the G, five notes above that. So here's our middle C. 
one, two, three, four, five, that's the G above the middle C. And just checking, we are one, two, three, four, five, six notes apart in our chord. One, two, three, four, five, six notes apart in our chord. So we've double checked that as well. And it's a quaver, stem down, quaver, eighth note. So that's that. Now we carry on over the page. It's a little bit awkward in this instance because we have to keep turning the page. This is because it's a sample paper. It's just a specimen paper. Nobody ever sat this exam. So the layout of the booklet isn't very helpful. Were this to be in an exam, I think they'd make sure that the pages could be seen facing each other. So we'll just manage uh, in this instance, but this wouldn't happen on an exam. So all the notes in bar five can be found in what key? So back over the page we go. Let's have a look at bar five. And we have, so we have an F sharp in the key signature, but that's been cancelled, so that not no longer stands. So there's no key signature as such, but we have an, a G sharp. So no F sharp, but a G sharp. Now there's no way that we could have a G sharp in a key signature on its own. Whenever there's a G sharp, we know that there have to be the preceding sharps as well. So that the only way we can sort of account for this is to call this a raised seventh in a minor key and so if G is the seventh that's been raised the next door note is A which shares a key, a key signature with C major which is no sharps or flats and then just this raised seventh so A minor it is. There we go. And so moving on, the next question asks us to describe the chords in the piano part marked A and B. We'll look over the page in a second. Helpfully, we're told that we're in the key of G major and we're looking to choose between these chords. So if we just map out the notes that we're going to be looking for, so chords 1, 2, 4 and 5, we're helpfully told that we're in the key of G major, so we know chord 1 is based upon G, the first note of the scale, the tonic, and then if we're counting upwards, chord 2 is A, 3, 4 is C, and 5 is based on note D, and then we count 1st, 3rd, 5th, so 1, 3, 5, G, B, D, a, C, E, C, E, G, and then D, F, A. Of course it's F sharp, but your key signature will deal with that. We're not quite there yet, because we're also asked to show whether the chord will be in root position, first inversion, or second inversion, so which is the bass note. So if we just mark out there then we can easily see what the bass note is. So turning the page, again we won't have this inconvenience if it were a real exam paper, we're looking at chord A, so here we see chord A and so we have a C, a G, a G and an E, C is in the bass. So C, E, G is chord 4, and then the C is in the bass, so it's position A. So let's look at chord B, and here we see B, we have a B, a G and a D, and then of course this G is still continuing, so another G as well, B, G, D, G. So they are the notes of chord 1, but because the B is in the bass, it's in first inversion, so we'd say B. There we go. And so let's press on to the next question. So now we're asked to rewrite the violin part of bar 5 in compound time, but without changing the rhythmic effect. So we've got to put in a new time signature. So let's see what we've got to begin with. So we're in common time, which is four beats per bar, and they are crotchet beats. 
So we're counting in crotchet beats. So we have four crotchet beats per bar. I've just sketched that out. One, two, three, four. Seems a little bit obvious, but it does help with the thinking process. And so turning over the page, we still need to stay four beats in a bar, but instead of grouping in simple time, which breaks up into twos, we need to be into compound time, which breaks up into three. So let's do that so we need four beats per bar but now we need it to be in compound time not simple time breaking up so we're having four beats per bar and it needs to be in compound time which we add a dot so adding a dot we'll do that so we can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve over eight and we've stayed in quadruple time we've got four beats per bar so that's our new time signature and so all you do is basically add a dot remove a triplet or instead of adding dots we can use duplets as well so let's see what our options are so we're looking bar five the violin part here we go so we're going to need to add a dot after the c a dot after the B and then we can put a duplet sign here or you could alternatively add dots as well so let's just think we're going to C B A B quickly sketch that C B A B this was a minim so we just add a dot this was a crotchet or coordinate just add a dot and then these are quavers so we could either add a dot or a duplet either one of those will answer the question correctly and so we've kept it exactly the same rhythmic effect but we're now in compound time groups of three there we go so moving on how many demi semi quavers or 30 second notes is the first note in the violin part of bar seven marked with a little star worth so let's see what we've got it's this note here a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note so just jot that down over the page so we have a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note so i'm just going to deal with the quarter note the crotchet so that divides into two quavers two eighth notes which divides again into four semi quavers four sixteenth notes which divides again into eight demi semis eight thirty second notes so that's the crotchet the quarter note dealt with and then a dot is half as much again so half of four eight oh, half of eight is four do me thinking all in one go and so eight plus four equals twelve so there we go twelve and now we've just got a little bit of general orchestral information to answer. So we're told that the violin is the highest sounding member of the string family. So now we need to name a different family and name its lowest sounding. So depending what family you choose, depends what instrument you choose. So uh, if you choose the brass family, the lowest instrument will be the tuba. Alternatively, you could say bass tuba. They don't always appear, but that would be an acceptable answer for an orchestral instrument. If you choose the woodwind family, the lowest sounding instrument is the bassoon. Alternatively, you could also say the double bassoon. Again, that isn't always present in the orchestra, but that would be an acceptable answer. That's even lower. And then finally, um, is it true or false that the violin sometimes uses the alto clef? Well, that's false because the only instrument that uses the alto clef is the viola. Is it true that a violinist might, might be asked to play consort? That's with mute. And that is true. Uh, I'm not a violinist. I don't know strings, but it's some way of dampening the strings. It's sort of like a little attachment that you put on the bridge, I think. So that's the end of that question. 
I do hope that's helpful to you. We'll look at the next question in the next video. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do visit SharonBill.com and have a browse around all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. I hope you've enjoyed working through this paper. I've certainly enjoyed working through it with you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.